How are you? My name is Michelle and I am your VCS for Living Environment. So today we're going to look at an at-home hands-on Beaks of Fence challenge. Um, so this is really cool. You can make this a game where like the students who come up with the most creative ideas or have the best examples of their trials and setups can maybe win something. Um, it's just to kind of get the kids involved. This is a lab that doesn't require any fancy materials per se, and a lot of regular hands-on items are gonna be something that can be used. So I think it would be really cool if we encourage the kids to come up with some creative ideas. And by calling it a challenge, that's an easy way to do that. So the first thing the kids are gonna need to do is they're gonna need to come up with some materials. Um, and again, you as educators know how they can be kind of adjusted. Um, so for instance, you know how you have the bigger, um, like those medium sized bowls or trays or dishes, and then those small ones that are the bird's stomachs. Um, if they don't have small bowls, they can use another side dish or something like that. So definitely show them how to be open about it. Um, and then you're looking for two different types of the seeds. So this can be anything they have in the house. It can be beads, beans, rice, pasta, Legos, any other small knickknack toys. Um, as long as there's two different options and they should have enough that they don't run out. We say about 200 of each, um, but it's just to ensure that you don't run out during the trial. Um, and then two different types of tools. So anything that will pick up in any way, either of these seeds. Um, so a lot of kids don't really know kind of the terminology, um, what's the difference between a plier and a tweezer. Um, so there are some examples there. Anything they have that can pick stuff up, there's hair clips that'll do that. Um, clothes pins, um, tweezers tongs, any of those chopsticks if they have them in the house. So anything that could pick something up. Even for example, forks and spoons will pick stuff up if you put two of them together. Um, just kind of anything that we can get them to pick something up with. A timer, most of the kids will probably use their phone. Um, you can also use a timer. There are timer uh, websites on the computer that are really good to use. And they're gonna need a member of the household in order to play with them. So for this section, we really just want the kids to list the materials that they found around their house. So what do they have for large seeds? What do they have for small seeds? What is beak option one and beak option two because they have to be different. And then what they're gonna do is they're gonna draw each one. Now, in order to digitally draw it, I set up drawings in this, so if you make a copy of this, you'll get the drawing option. If you double click, it'll open up as a drawing. You then go to line and then scribble. Here's line, you click on the arrow and you go to scribble. And this will allow them to free draw. So this will allow them to kind of draw whatever um, tool that they have and then they hit save and close and that will show up in the box that they have and then they could of course resize it. So we want to have the drawings for one and two. So it's a little bit trickier when you only have two people to do this lab. So for the first round is no competition. Each person is going to go independently or on their own. So what we're going to do is the first uh, no competition, partner one will use tool number one, and they're going to do one trial picking up small seeds, one trial picking up large seeds. Partner number two is going to use tool number two, and they're going to pick up small seeds once and large seeds once, and then we'll find their averages. For the competition round, this is a little bit trickier because remember for the competition round, the big overarching goal is to see that the more competition you have, the harder it is to maintain the same amount of food that you're able to pick up. But in a normal traditional setting, when you're partnered up with someone, you're using the same tool and you're going against another team. So in order to replicate that, what you're doing is in the first two rounds, trial one and trial two, 
Partner one will have tool number one, partner two will have tool number two. And you're gonna do the trials at the same time, picking up as many seeds as possible. And you're recording just the partner one's numbers. For trial three and four, what you're gonna do is you're gonna swap tools so partner two now has tool number one. And you're gonna do two rounds, both feeding from the same time, and record those numbers here. So this competition with small seeds is gonna be the same tool. So in order to do that with two partners, you do two rounds with tool number one and then swap. And partner two will use two number ones and swap. The second tool for these is really just to show competition, not to show what tool is better than the other. And then the same thing goes for the next round. It's gonna be large seeds, but it's gonna be tool number one, partner number one for two trials, and then partner number two, tool number one for two trials. And then from that, the students have their analysis questions. So there's regular the regular analysis questions. Um, you'll see the specific examples from the lab, which is also from the main state lab that is brought in, um, as well as the um, circle, the Finch circle as I like to call it. Um, so this students may need some help with. Um, I like to tell my students to kind of cut this into a pizza and any topping that falls on their pizza is a characteristic of that bird. So if you cut this into a slice, um, you cut this one into a slice, you'll notice that this is the name, this is what it looks like, it's probing bill, and it eats all animal food. So I like to teach them that way, and it seems to be something that's easy for them to remember. Um, and then they finish answering the questions um, for their analysis questions. So I really want to remind you, it's okay that this lab doesn't look exactly like it would in the school building if everyone was there. Again, the city and state allows us to adapt these labs as best possible in order to get them to the students in an effective way. So although it doesn't look exactly the same as it would if we were in the building, it is still covering the major points. So don't be afraid that everything's not getting covered or that the lab doesn't look exactly the same as it would from the building. Have some fun with it. Allow the kids to do some hands-on activities at home. Um, and this is always a big one that the kids love in the building. So how can we kind of bring that joy and entertainment back? There will be another video about the virtual version, which doesn't require materials if you have any students that feel like they cannot get this lab done at home, whether they don't have a partner to work with or whether they don't have the correct materials.